Welcome to another episode of the Information Addicts Podcast. My name is Cassidy. I'm an information addict, and this is my podcast where I explore information, ideas, beliefs, try to do those things more responsibly. Uh, today, I've got a conversation for you with my friend Jeff. Jeff has been on my channel before, and he's always lovely to talk to, uh, but today is sort of a special conversation for me uh, because I got to talk with him about his uh, decision to get a degree in art. I have been trying to incorporate more art into this channel for a long time. One, because I'm a filmmaker and uh, artistic things interest me, but I also think it's been very helpful in helping me process and understand big questions, what I believed and the importance of those things. And so getting a chance to talk a little bit more about that and highlight that part of life, of where beauty and creation affects us is super important. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this conversation um, where me and Jeff can sort of explore those things. Jeff, so nice to see you and your cat today. Hey, Cassidy, (laughs) it's nice to see you too. Thanks for coming back. Uh, You've been on my channel before, but uh, before we get started, why don't you give just a brief background? Who are you? Ooh, brief. That's a hard one. (laughs) Um, brief or unbrief however however long you have. it's, it's <laughs> your time <laughs> well I went back and watched the first time um that I came onto your channel and uh I know you do your your intros after the conversations and you had mentioned this is by far the longest conversation I've had on my channel <laughs> well so <laughs> I think that's changed my uh my friend Christian we had like a three-hour conversation or something and I split it oh. up in two parts because it was too long to <laughs> put in one That's and right. it's like two directions but you know hey. okay well I, I'm no longer the record holder so I feel better about that <laughs> you gotta you gotta redeem yourself today <laughs> brevity is not my strong suit so I'm working on that um I don't know I, I don't know what context you want to talk to this about uh, or talk that you want this conversation to be in um I don't, I don't know uh, if, uh briefly you know you and I met through YouTube I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's relevant. So yeah. uh, I, I live in Texas. I um, work uh, in software development, not as a person who like does the engineering or anything like that, but just kind of helps to manage the process and analyze things and say, oh, this seems like it should be put together this way. What do you guys who know a lot more about this think? And then they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Or they're like, don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about, (laughs) but he's trying. (laughs) So that's kind of what I do um, in my, to to earn money. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Um, and and this kind of goes into what I want to talk about. You are making a career change. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Where you're going to school to uh, pursue creative endeavors. Do you kind Mm -hmm. of want to talk a little bit about that? Sort of what incited that and, and what kind of art are you pursuing? Yes. Um, so I, this is, I, I'm going to jump back and forth across the timeline. So if anything gets confusing, feel free to interrupt me and say, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, after I graduated high school, I had no plan. Um, I, we had just moved from one, my family had just moved like a year and a half before my senior year, uh, had just moved from North Carolina to Texas, which is where I'm originally from, but we moved around a bit, um, in my, you know, middle school years, uh, and high into high school. So there wasn't really a lot in my life of like, Oh, let's get you prepped, you know, for like adulthood, or at least if it was going on, it was not anything intentional. It wasn't, it went over your head. Yeah. <laughs> Or let's get you on this path yeah. um, or, you know, maybe to be more charitable to my parents and, you know, the people around me is just like, well, we're trying, but he's just not taking it. You know, <laughs> he's not, he's not listening. He's not hearing what we're saying. He has no motivation. So we're not going to try. <laughs> I don't know if that was a charitable <laughs> interpret or painting of them, but uh, suffice it to say, I didn't have any kind of career plan. I didn't have any kind of education plan. Um, <laughs> I had two, I had two dreams, uh, in my teen, in my high school, my late middle school to high school years. Um, early on in middle school, it was to draw comic books. Um, 
And into early high school, you know, I still had that, you know, drawing as something that I felt like I wanted to do. Um, and then as I got later into high school, I wanted to play basketball for a living. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't tell from the video, but I'm six, five, um, which is, you know, tall by, or back then it was tall by high school standards. Um, but it was, it was a little bit, it was quite a bit of a delusion. Um, because, <laughs> you know, I couldn't even start on my high school basketball team in a small uh, high school that was in North Carolina at the time. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to Texas, you know, uh, I was used to tryouts because we had tryouts at my high school in North Carolina. And I actually made it after trying out for two years and not getting on the team. I finally made it onto the varsity team, but I can't, I think I played in one game and I actually injured myself <laughs> in that game. I got like a twisted ankle and was on crutches for about three or four weeks. Um, <laughs> Anyway, this story's meandering all over the place. So, but those were the, those were the two things. I wanted to play basketball, and I wanted to um, I wanted to draw comic books. Um, one of the things that my dad told me as the art stuff, uh, you know, they, my parents, you know, supported me to uh, an extent. Um, they like would pay for my art supplies. They'd pay for my comic books. You know, where I was getting my love for wanting to draw from. Actually, I'm wearing a comic book shirt for this <laughs> video. It's this appropriate. is my favorite comic book artist, a guy named Todd McFarlane, who's gone on to make money in several other spheres, um, makes like action figures and action figures, probably the wrong word, something like that. Anyway, you can look it up. McFarlane toys is stuff mm. that he does. Um, creator of that character spawn is maybe what he's most famous for at this point. But mm. back when I was a kid, he was very famous for, um, drawing Spider-Man, uh, which is the shirt. Um, and so where was I going with all that? Um, uh, yes, they were supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, they would pay for those things. They even bought me like a, a drawing table, a drafting table, you know, that I could work off of. Again, this was late middle school, uh, early high school. But eventually my dad, um, who also worked in technology, like managing technology teams, um, he told me, you know, you know, all this art stuff is good, but you need to have something to fall back on. Um, and so that always stuck in the back of my mind. Um, later after I graduated high school, I went to like community college, junior college for a, a handful of semesters. Um, but also there was this college out in, um, Georgia, uh, when I was in North Carolina, they like advertised at my high school, uh, called the Savannah college of art and design. And, um, for some reason that place was just stuck in my head of, oh, wow, you know, if I could do anything, I would like to just go to school full time, um, not have to work and just focus on school. And I would love it if I could do, you know, get like a art education. Hmm. And so I was still living with my parents at the time. And um, they've even financed a trip for me to go visit and to apply. And, you know, I took my portfolio with me. And this was back in the late 90s. I went and toured the campus. Um, I applied. I actually got accepted um, on that tour visit. Hmm. Um, I got back home. I was really excited about it. And then I realized how much it actually costs uh, to go there. So my mm -hmm. family didn't have the money to pay for it. Um, I was not interested in going into debt, um, mm -hmm. especially that much debt, mm -hmm. um, really for anything. I probably wouldn't have done it for anything unless I knew, you know, and I wasn't I, I wasn't career minded. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I wouldn't have even gone into debt for something like that unless somebody had told me, no, look, if you take on this much debt, this is actually a career that pays on average, you know, X amount, yeah. you'll be able to pay it off in, you know, five years, something like that, you know, or, or less. I don't know. I, I just knew I didn't want to be in debt. And um, so that's when I started my, what has turned into my career is right after that visit, about a month later, um, I started working in a call center uh, at the company my dad was a vice president at. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I worked at that company for probably 22 years. Um, wow. Started in the call center, taking phone calls from distressed motorists who were broken down on the side of the road and arranging tow trucks to go pick them up or change their tire or bring them gas, things like that. Unlock their cars if they mm -hmm. lock their keys in it. So I did that job um, for about a year. They 
said, hey, you're pretty good at this and you're actually good at helping other people learn how to do it. So they shifted me over into their training department where I started leading like new hire classes. And then, you know, I, I stuck around long enough where before I left the place, I was running their call center. Mm. So that was after, you know, 20 odd years. So just like, well, that guy's been here long enough. He knows how it all works. Let's just put him in charge of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, our company got purchased um, and I could see the writing on the wall. You know, some of the, my uh, higher ups who I had worked with for years were, you know, getting laid off. Um, and their plan was to move the company to their home base, which was in another state. So um, through some of the connections that I had worked with over my 20 years, they told me about another job that was available, but it was in the technology field. And this connection I had actually worked with at the roadside assistance company because um, he was in our IT department and helped yeah. us figure out how to um, well, we worked on a project together to install new software that we use to like dispatch help out to people. And so that's where I learned about, oh, this is how you build technology. This is how you figure out, you know, what mm -hmm. different things people are trying to do with software to accomplish certain goals. And mm -hmm. so, and I learned how to test those things. And I, I just learned a lot of skills that I had no idea right. I was necessarily going to parlay into something else. And so sure. he, at that point was working for an actual software development company. And he's like, Hey, I think you can do this job over here. You know, you don't have it on your resume, but I know that I'm in, I, you know, I have connections with the people who are the hiring managers and stuff like that. So I can't get you the job. You'll still have to come in and interview for it, but I know you can do this job because I've seen you do these things. Yeah. So I get that job. Um, I start working there. Uh, I do that for about a year. COVID hits. Um, I get hit with COVID layoff almost exactly a year after I get mm -hmm. that job. Um, within four days, I'm very fortunate. I find another job with a different software company. Uh, that's the one that I've been with now for two years. Anyway, that's where I am today. Um, while I've been working for this current software company, I would say about a year and a half ago, um, our in one of our team meetings, our manager said, hey, the company just wants me to remind everybody that... Um, we have tuition reimbursement. Uh, we have a tuition reimbursement plan. So if anybody wants to, you know, complete their or work on their schooling, uh, the company's willing to reimburse up to, you know, X amount or whatever is allowed by, you know, the, the tax laws, things like that. And so I started thinking about that some more, you know, on and off for like the last 20 odd years, I had taken different classes at junior college, either online or in person. And so I had a handful of credits um, and I started looking into it and, um, you know, you and I have talked before, like we, like we, uh, we said, we met on <laughs> YouTube um, <laughs> through comments, through different comment sections or else, you know, seeing us on other channels, seeing each other on other channels. Yeah. And um, one of one of those things that kind of converged was like the Jordan Peterson thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people have their opinions ranging very widely on Jordan Peterson. And I, I have my own opinions that probably range very widely on <laughs> Jordan Peterson. Um <laughs> But one of the things that I did do uh, that he offers is his um, future authoring plan or mm -hmm. his self-authoring program. Yeah. And I guess a short version, I'll try to do a short version of that, <laughs> is it's a, it's, a, it's a writing exercise where essentially you write about your past and you go through, and it's very structured, and you write about your present, who you are today, and then you also write about what you want for your future. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to figure out where this was on the timeline, but but somewhere before I got, I left the company that I'd been with for 20 years, um, my dad passed away. Mm -hmm. And shortly after that, you know, was when I was listening to a little bit of uh, Jordan Peterson, but really I was just focused on his biblical lectures. You know, a lot of people say they pay, came for the controversy, they stay for the meeting. I was just like, oh, well, I keep hearing things about these biblical lectures. Let me check this out. And I wasn't really interested in anything else. Um, <laughs> so I watched those. That's how I get interested in self-authoring. You know, right around that time after I lost my dad, I'm hitting midlife crisis mode. And it's just like, what am I doing with my life kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So I do the future authoring program. Um, one of the things that comes out of that is, hey, you could, you know, you could continue to further educate yourself, you know, complete your complete at least complete your bachelor's degree and so i looked into how many credits i needed to do and i could 
I could complete my associates like um, I, I'm getting things me messed up. I actually did complete my associates uh, shortly after that. I think I only needed like two or three more mm -hmm. uh, classes. So two more semesters and I knocked it out with two online classes. Um, right after I got that uh, degree, by the way, is when I got this job, this second job with mm -hmm. the, the technology company. Um, or maybe it was the first one. I can't remember, but I, I connect it with, hey, I actually had a quote unquote college degree. I had an associate's degree. <laughs> um, and then I got hired into a completely different um, career, you mm -hmm. know, uh, working working for a technology company, helping to lead technology teams. Yeah. Um, okay. So back to where I was when I was in this meeting with my current employer, um, I, I had completed an associate's degree, but I hadn't completed my bachelor's. So I was like, oh, well, there's no reason not to do this. You know, I don't have any other plans. I'm just working this job with, you know, aimlessly, essentially, uh, from just a personal standpoint. It's just like, what, is, yeah. what am I accomplishing with this? Mm -hmm. And um, so I signed up for the tu tuition reimbursement program. I, um, it had, you know, it had certain restrictions. It's like, it has to apply to your job or something that you're doing or are going to be doing for the company. So it, right. it had to be limited to technology. So, you know, I couldn't like just go off and it, it, it was, it was still somewhere in the back of my head, but it wasn't there um, actively about art mm. and it wasn't even on the table, you know, unless I was going to pay for it myself. Right. And so I was just like, okay, yeah, well, let me just at least complete my bachelor's. Let me get one in technology that would probably help me more in this career. Um, it might position me better for, you know, different roles, um, more income, things like that. So I actually, for the first time in my life, applied to a four-year university. Um, actually, that's not true. You could count the Savannah College of Art and Design as a four-year university, but a non-art school four-year university. Because remember, in high school, I wasn't getting prepared for college or anything like that. Right. I was just trying, I was just going to school and I hated school. So <laughs> I just wanted to get it over with, you know? Right. Why well, sign up I, for four more years of torture, right? <laughs> right. As soon as I graduated, I was like, oh, finally, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. And then mm -hmm. I didn't really have anything that I wanted to do just other than not, there were things I didn't want to do, like go to school. <laughs> but I, like I said, I did attend junior college just because, you know, I still lived at home. My dad was like, hey, if you go to school, I'll pay for it. You know, and people hear, you know, if I heard that today, I'd be like, oh, perfect. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but anyway, uh, I didn't I didn't have a, a plan. And so this was this was the first time now that I had applied for school because I didn't take I didn't take SATs, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point, I had an associate's degree. So just. For all you youngsters out there, if you do knock out your basics at like a junior college, you're pretty much a lock to get into a local, you know, state school. <laughs> yeah, even uh, even if you just have a GED, like you don't right. even have to have a high school diploma. Right. Um, and if you're worried about, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get accepted. Well, <laughs> there was still a part of that in my mind where it's just like, oh, I'm not smart enough to go to college. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't do that anyway. Um so to get like an acceptance letter from a high school or from a high school, <laughs> from a four-year university, you know, um, a university that's relatively, you know, well-known here in, you know, the North Texas area, uh -huh. um, it was just kind of cool to actually get a letter in the mail that said you're accepted. And yeah. it's silly because, you know, I'm in my late forties. And this is typically what something like a 17 or 18 year old is used to experiencing. And I'm experiencing yeah. it for the first time. So, you know, it was a little, I don't know, it was a little emotional and I, I can't explain it, but it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm good enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I get accepted. Uh, the, the only way that I could do the degree plan that qualified um, was uh, I had to, and for me to continue to work full time was it had to be a hundred percent online degree plan. So they did have mm -hmm. one technology degree that met that criteria. And so I got into that and uh, I signed up for two classes uh, in the fall of last year was 2022. So in the fall of 2021 is when I signed up to complete my bachelor's degree in a technology field. Um, I took two classes online. Uh, it was very stressful. And uh, like I had mentioned, you know, in my career for at least a decade, I was a trainer 
and developed lesson plans. So I was, uh -huh. a, I was an instructor in the professional world, teaching adults, getting up in front of classes, walking them through material, you know, walking them through uh, real world, real life situations, how they would be doing their job, all kinds of stuff. And there were tons of things, you know, administering tests, grading tests, you know, preparing people for tests, all those kind of things. Um, my experience with uh, school uh, through this online program, it just felt like, and I, I don't know the ins and outs of, of why my customer experience with this, uh, with this program, I don't know the reasons why it was bad, but it was bad. Yeah. And I would bounce this off of other people around me and who knows, maybe they were just deluding me, but they're like, no, that is not you. And, you know, and I'm checking in with people who like have master's degrees that are close to me and, you know, who have mm. very high levels of education. And they're like, no, the instructions that you're getting on some of these assignments, they're like contradictory. They don't make any sense. Mm. Um, it's almost like, you know, they didn't check these things before they posted online, you know, what the expectations were for these assignments. Right. And so it was the way that I phrase it is it was much more difficult than it needed to be. And not, you know, and not even for the right reasons. Like if the if the material was just something that's just very difficult, it, it wasn't. It wasn't difficult material. It was some of the things that I've been doing in my career, you know, my whole life. I probably could have taught at least one of those classes, but, um, well, maybe not. That's a little bit of hubris <laughs> right there. But my point is I could have helped them develop a much better lesson plan. Sure, sure. <laughs> Although, so, I feel like oh, the sorry, online, I just feel like the online experience is more difficult. Hmm. I mean, in, in the university setting. Yeah. I don't know if that's for all, but I, I took a couple online classes and I don't know, they just weren't as impactful or good mm -hmm. as the ones that I took in person. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that, that had something to do with it or I, I don't know. Well, when I was completing my associate's degree, that was all online as well. Okay. And I did not run into this same <laughs> problem. So it might be yeah. something with perhaps the administration in the higher level and the the larger yeah. colleges, maybe the two-year colleges have it down a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe well, not. It, it's interesting because the two-year colleges, in my experience, because I went to community college as well, um, kind of kind of in a similar vein <laughs> that you expressed. Um, but uh the the teachers at community colleges are often there to teach, whereas the teachers at universities are often there to do research. Or that's mm. that's a that's a huge pull, and then they've got yeah. these huge classes, and so there's like not much connection. So a lot of the classes I took in community college, I felt were more hefty and impactful than the ones that I took at mm -hmm. university. Um, although there were there were some good ones there too, but there was just something more grounded with that. I do think yeah. I do think there's something with the university system and the way they uh, train their teachers and the way they try to get their money mm -hmm. from the university that yeah creates some of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. The more I think about it, uh, that probably is the case because both of my instructors in the, well, actually, my first semester, my, my first semester at this four-year college, it was actually a better experience than um, this the spring semester. So one mm. year ago, the spring semester is actually where I was encountering more of what I was just describing. Yeah. So my first two classes, um, I... I got the swing of it. I got A's in both classes, um, but I was very stressed because, you know, I wanted to get it perfect. You know, there's sure. a part of me that just had imposter syndrome. Like I'm not supposed to be here. Technology mm -hmm. isn't even, you know, I I didn't even, I didn't even study for this, which is a dumb thing for me to be telling myself because As no, you, that's it. what you're doing. You're <laughs> studying for this. So, but yeah, I was like over, um, I wasn't a good student in high school. Um, I was a, I would get C's without, I mean, I wouldn't even try. Yeah. And I would get C's and B's sometimes. And, you know, my dad would always say about me and my brother, you, you boys are so smart, but it's, you don't, if you don't care about it, nothing, you don't do anything with it or something like that. You know, when it's <laughs> right. something that you're interested in, you guys are brilliant. And, um, I just wish that there was somebody around who knew how to help us <laughs> channel that ability. Uh -huh. um, but who knows? I, I have no regrets because, you know, I am where I am. It's part of what's made me who I am. Yeah. But um, I was stressed in my first semester about, I don't know if I'm, 
I want to make sure that I get this in on time. I don't want to have any missing assignments. I want to do, I want to follow all the instructions to make sure that I'm, you know, can check off every box and say, yes, I, I did that part of the assignment rubric. I, I met that qualification. I did that. I did that. I did that. And so, you know, I would spend like an entire, I, I would only have the weekends where I could really work on my schoolwork. And so I would spend an entire weekend on like, two assignments, one assignment from each class and, mm. you know, just taking time away from family, taking time away from being able to just take a day of rest kind of thing, yeah. you know, and I was really um, burning myself out. And so in the, in the spring semester, th this is all leading to the question that you asked me. Yes. So if anybody's wondering, <laughs> where is he going with this anyway? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it it's, it's a long walk in the park we're taking oh. our time all right cool <laughs> um <laughs> sorry I, I got distracted by a thought that i can't vocalize um <laughs> it's about it's about other people <laughs> that i know um uh so in this in the spring semester of last year um i was doing the exodus 90 thing for the second year in a row. For those who don't know what Exodus 90 is, you can look it up, but it's essentially 90 days of... Um, Torture. <laughs> I was going to say prayer. <laughs> oh, right. Prayer. Fasting. <laughs> prayer, fasting. Um, Cold showers. Asceticism, Asceticism, right? Quote, unquote, training. That's the Greek version of, or that's what the Greek word is where the root comes from. So yeah, you're you're basically denying yourself uh, creature comforts or habits maybe that are pulling you away from relationships with others, like maybe watching sports too much or just TV in general or social media or just the internet in general, things like that, um, where... Well, if you weren't spending time on that, what things could you be doing to help the people around you who maybe need your help or need your presence, you know, things like that. So mm -hmm. um, it's a, I, it was a positive experience for me. I did it, you know, two years in a row. I came right up to the precipice of doing it for a third year in a row. But this time around, I knew I needed to back off. I just, there was just a feeling that I had. And so far it's turned out to be the right, decision just because of everything that's been going on in my life um yeah. especially like work is insane right now before we started i was telling you i've i've worked at least 10 hours a day for six out of the last seven days <laughs> trying to get a, a project complete um and i have vowed that i'm not going to work on it this weekend so we'll see what's waiting for me monday morning <laughs> <laughs> um anyway <clears throat> why did i start talking about exodus 90 oh I was doing Exodus 90 during that time. And part of Exodus 90 is um, you spend an hour in prayer every day for 90 days. Um, if you can't get to an hour, at least 20 minutes. Um, and it's a very quiet time. You know, mm -hmm. you might think, oh, wow, if you're spending an hour a day in prayer, um, are you getting some really good stuff back? Well, maybe <laughs> um, for the two years in a row that I did it, I think I got maybe one thing out of those 90 days that I felt like, Hmm, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting some direction here. Mm -hmm. So for both years, maybe it was one thing where I could kind of look at it and say, yeah, I think that was something that I was hearing that I need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't say that necessarily this was a thing that came like during prayer time, but maybe it was definitely over that 90 day process where, <clears throat> I was going, I was doing my second semester of this four-year school working on this bachelor's degree um, where I just felt like, man, I am just trying to be perfect on every assignment that I do, no matter even this extra credit, I'm trying to grab all the extra credit points. I'm trying to get an A, you know, I've got my little spreadsheet for all of my assignments for this semester. And it's just like, if I get this grade on this one and this one on this one, you know, let me see what grade I got back. Every time I get an alert, hey, your thing has been, let me get into my, log into my spreadsheet and put my grade in there and see how far off I am from getting an A now. Cause I had a little calculation in there that would tell me, here's what you need to hit your requisite points, you know, to be quote unquote successful in your own built up idea of what this is. I don't know who I was trying to impress. Why do I need to have a 4.0? 
uh, in you know all of the courses that I've taken here? I don't know. Am I trying to get into some kind of master's program somewhere? Why? It's not that I shouldn't, but why? What's the purpose? All those kind right. of things. And so I just one of the things that I felt like I did get out of that prayer time was, you know, quit trying to be perfect in every little thing that's going on. Because what I started to mm -hmm. realize was at home, all I do is like relax and I don't like, like I'm not a perfectionist with things in my personal life. Mm. Um, but I am a perfectionist when it comes to work related things. And what I'm finding out now is when I am like focused on school, I treat school like I treat work where I never treated it that way when I was in high school. Right. <laughs> um, and I just realized that that was just completely burning me out. Mm. And I also started to wonder, you know, what, what am I trying to do with this technology degree? Like the only reason that I did it is because I could get it for free. Right. Sure. Um, because that's why I got into the tuition reimbursement program. I was like, well, if they're going to pay for it, there's no reason why I shouldn't do it. So that was right. part of the calculus for getting into it. Um, so pause on where I am in that part of the story. I'll come back to it. But while I was uh, in this semester, before I kind of had that stop trying to be perfect type thing, and what are you doing this for? And what are you trying to achieve? I got an email from my uh, two-year college uh, alma mater. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Uh, am I an alma mater? I don't know. You're an alumnus. I'm an alum. alum I'm an alumnus. Mm -hmm. I'm an alumnus. My alma mater, uh, two year cut. Yeah, alumni is plural. Plural. Alumnus yes. Is singular. Yeah. Yes, alumnus. So from my two year college, I get an email that said, "Hey, we are partnered with um, a college called the University of Arizona Global Campus, which is an online school." affiliated with the University of Arizona. It's, they don't make it seem like it's just like this kind of legal uh, association. They make it seem like this is the University of Arizona and these right. are all of our online classes. It's not the same thing. Yeah, But I don't want to disparage them at all. I just accidentally did. That's not what I meant to do. Apologies to you. Because um, they said we were partnered uh, with them and they're offering a, a full scholarship um, in any of the degree plans that they offer to um, it's, it's you're eligible if you have an associate degree from our two year school, cause we're mm. in partnership with them. So I was like, Oh, wow. Um, tuition re reimbursement is only, you know, I still have to pay for like 25% of all my expenses with my current degree plan. Right. But I could get everything covered. Cause this was full. This was fully loaded. It's just like, Hey, you need two more years or so to complete your bachelor's. Uh, that's what this scholarship is. It covers books, it covers fees, it covers tuition, it covers everything involved with this with this online degree. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why not? So I applied for it, forgot about it. Okay, back to where I was in the story. <laughs> why am I doing this? I'm trying to be a perfectionist. Just thinking about this some more. Um, my birthday comes around last year. My uh, wife and kids pool some money together. They buy me... Uh, for my birthday, they get me this iPad. iPad, yeah. iPad. And also, they buy this, the Apple Pencil, uh -huh. right? My daughter, she's a really good artist. Um, she doesn't know what she wants to do with her life either. Surprise, the Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, but she has been using an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil for like years. And she's like, we've got to get this for dad. You know, he's going to love it. He doesn't draw anymore. And this will get him to start drawing again. And she was right. <laughs> yeah. And this bug that I have that, you know, would keep biting me probably every like five to seven years um, over the last 20 years would just be like, man, you really like drawing you know you should get back into it or i'd see like a piece of artwork or i'd take my kids to the comic book store and i'd see something by a particular artist and i'd be like wow that's amazing you know i wish i could draw like that I'd, I'd like to try you know my hand at it again and i would pick it back up and then you know the it seems like that that bug that bit me would just like go dormant again okay so i get this I start drawing with it. I start thinking about, you know, some of the things that I wanted to do when I was a kid, my brother and I had like come up with this story for a comic book character. And, um, you know, I, I was like, 
I would apply to like work with comic book companies and stuff like that. I would like even submit some of my characters to the major publishers, you know, things like that. Well, this things that I would do when I was a little kid. <laughs> and um and yeah, none of that stuff panned out. Uh nothing happened, um, obviously. <laughs> uh and um so I like start I have like this bin in my uh closet. It's like an old, you know, a bunch of my old artwork, some of the things that I submitted in my my application to the the art college back in, you know, the mid to late 90s. I still have like pieces and things like that and all mm -hmm. these drawings that I've done that I did over my over the years. And I'm looking yeah. at it now as a nearing 50 year old looking back at some of this artwork that like a 14 year old did and a 15 year old did. And I'm just like being I'm looking at it almost as if I'm a different person, you know, mm. and I'm like, wow, if I could talk to this kid today, I would be like, oh, my gosh, you could do this. Like, I'm looking at some of the professional artwork that's out there. And yeah, you're you're not at the level, but you have like a talent where if mm. you develop this to use a Peter Petersonianism, God only knows what could happen. And so, you know, I sit down and I'm having conversations with my wife. She's seeing me stress out, you know, about school and we're talking it through. And I look through like some of my old journals um, that I was writing maybe around the time that my or shortly after my dad had passed away um, where I was, you know, where I was still in my job that I could see the writing on the wall where I was eventually going to get laid off. The one that I had been with for 20 years. And I was like, what am I going to do? You know, this is all I've ever done. And so in the in the um, self-authoring program, you know, I'm, I had also come up with, well, what could my future look like? What other careers could I be interested in? And, you know, art was one of those things that I was talking about exploring um, before I got into this, hey, let me just finish my bachelor's degree thing. And I looked back at one of my journals that I was writing during that time and I was just reading it and it it just started moving me and I started reading it out loud to my wife. And, you know, I was just like, I wonder if that art school out in Georgia has anything online now. Like if they have online degree options, mm. look them up. Sure enough, they did. <laughs> they do. And so I start taught, this is what I was trying to discern actually during Exodus 90. I'm remembering it now. Um, the one thing that I did get out of that prayer, um, prayer time, was I felt like I got a word like a specific word, not like a, in the ethereal sense, I got a word, <laughs> but like, um, a, a, a word, the word, and this is, this is silly now because I can't remember what the specific word was. I think it was quit. The word was quit <laughs> it, or give up. It was something like that. It was, no, it was, it was in the realm of quit. I can't remember the exact word, but something like that. And I was like, this is tied to school. Mm. And so in Exodus 90, every week, like you meet with the other people who are doing it with you. And we had like a cohort of about, you know, uh, 10 or 11 people spread across the globe. One's in your country. One is in, or a couple are in your country. Mm -hmm. A couple are in England. A couple are here in the US. Things like uh, all those places, if you've ever heard of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I bring it to them and I'm like, Guys, I'm I'm probably about 78% of the way through the spring semester. I'm not sure if this means I should just um, drop out of the classes that I'm in right now or if I should complete these courses for the spring semester and then take a break from school for a little while and see what else needs to happen. Um, so that's what came in Exodus 90. And then this thing was hitting of, oh, art, what if? you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I was discerning that and I was like, okay, well, I need to think about this some more because if I do something like this, I do want to have a target. I want to have an aim in mind. What am I going for? Mm -hmm. Do I want to become a professional artist? Well, I don't know. I don't know if I would even enjoy that. You know, if I was doing that all day long instead of mm -hmm. what I'm doing today all day long, perhaps mm -hmm. I would not like it as much as I, what I'm doing right now. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I came up with a couple of goals. Um, one of them was to feel like, uh, to be proud, or what was the word that I used? The goal that I wrote down is 
to uh, be able to produce art that when I look at it, it impresses me, mm -hmm. right? Not that anybody else can look at it. Oh, it's so good. Whether they be an actual, you know, professional or somebody who wants to buy it, or if it's, you know, like a family member who's just like, oh yeah, your stuff is just, it's so much better than I can do, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was one of my goals is if, if I, if I pers pursue some kind of education, whether it be formal education or just finding what resources I can online, um, you know, tutorials on YouTube, classes that you can take, you know, on specific disciplines or techniques or things like that, that you right. can pay for, w whether it be uh, an actual through a, through an institution or putting together my own education. Um, that's one of the goals that I wanted to hit. And then the other goal that I wanted to hit was I want to draw my own comic book, the story that my brother and I had worked on to like do essentially like a graphic novel because mm -hmm. the, there's there's a story that we had in mind that has some general outline of how it would work and it's just like well I don't I don't feel like I have the skill set right now to produce something like that that I would be happy with you know mm. and sure. I I've talked to people and I've seen people say Dude, just go and do it you know just do it it doesn't matter how good it is well <laughs> and, and this is probably part of my process of doesn't have to be perfect you know mm -hmm. uh, just just put it out just do it and um anyway so those, those, those were the two goals that I had settled on. Um, so the, after hearing that quit and after some discernment, that word quit, I was just like, okay, yes, what I will do is I'll take a break from school after this, um, spring semester, because I was planning to just like, I'm doing spring and then I'm doing the summer one and then I'm doing summer two and I'm just keep, I'm racking up my credits because I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to get this degree. Boom. Then I've got it. Yeah. Right. And so the thing that I got out of Exodus 90 was take a break, pause, take a break. The pause might end up, you don't go back to school. You do something else, you know, just yeah. stop, see what else needs to happen. Listen. Um, so the spring semester, it actually hadn't come to a close yet. I, I'm, like, I think there's like three weeks left in school. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. I get an email. Uh, no, what do I get? I get an email, but I don't realize that I got the email <laughs> because I get a voicemail from a recruiter, recruiter. Can't remember what she was. Uh, somebody at the university of Arizona global campus. I said, hey, we're in the final assessment mode of the scholarships that we're offering. Um, and you're a finalist. I'm like, oh. And so we need you to, you know, send us a little bit more information. You know, if you can send us your resume, we just want to see what you've done in your professional life. I think that's what they asked for. I can't remember. They needed something else to complete the to to present to their review board for the finalists to make their final decision. Mm. So I got it to them, uh, not expecting to hear anything. Well, I was expecting, oh, wow, I, that's interesting. They actually left me a voicemail. So um, I submit it. I get it in on time, you know, because I'm like, oh, there's a deadline. I've got to hit the deadline. Let me get this out. <laughs> and um, then they send me another email uh, about, I don't know, six or seven days later. And it says, um, it says, hey, uh we want our our review board like wants to meet with the finalists so can you sign up for one of these slots it would be about 15 minutes um here's the availability on the various days you know in the coming week if you could sign up for one of these zoom calls i'm like oh wow this seems like it might be getting serious yeah. wow <laughs> never won anything before in my life what is this <laughs> so i sign up for a slot i sit down at this very table in this very camera, on this very screen that I'm looking at you on, talking <laughs> to um, this representative from the University of Arizona Global Campus. And we get onto a Zoom call. It starts recording. She said, hey, I'm just waiting for one of my other associates to join. Um, and then he comes on. Um, he's, I can't remember, but they're, they're, they're somewhere, you know, in the administration at that university. And the first question that she asked me is, hey, so yeah, the your our our review board, you know, just wanted us to 
ask a few more questions or we wanted to get some more information from you, get a chance to talk to you. And so the first question she asked is, um, okay, so if you were to be granted this scholarship, who's the first person that you would call? Or what's the first call that you would make? And I said, well, if I were to be, you know, granted this uh, scholarship, I would call my wife from the next room over because, you know, she's here <laughs> at home and I would tell her, oh my gosh, I got this scholarship. And uh, they started laughing. They said, oh, you know, they, they thought that was funny, I guess. And uh, <laughs> then she goes on to say, we'll go ahead and call her. <laughs> I was like, what? They're like, yeah, you, you're, you want it. There were two and you're one of the two. I'm wow. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, and they, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I had no idea, you know. Um, so I got a full scholarship that was limited to a technology degree. Um, like they had, they had actually, I'm sorry, it was limited to the different types of degrees that they offer. And they offered yeah, yeah. like, they offered like two or three different technology degrees. One of them was in something that like I already do and I already know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it would just be like putting a quote, a little stamp, stamp on, on. <laughs> on, look, here's proof. I've got this, you know, <laughs> another one is like in cybersecurity, which I don't really know a lot about, but mm. apparently it's, it can be lucrative right now. If you're, you know, if that's a path that you pursue, um, and then there were a couple of other things. I think there was like a business degree, which kind of looked interesting to me because that's kind of what my background was before I got into technology. But mm -hmm. anyway, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've got, now I've got a decision to make. I mean, I, I went ahead and I accepted it. Um, or what did I do? No, I think I had like seven days where they said, you have to, you know, they were going to send you like some paperwork. You, it's either seven or 12 days. We need you to sign it. So that's that's what I had on my plate. And I was just like, you have two paths before you now. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, and and it wouldn't start up, like I could start it up like in the fall of the following year. So you know, all this stuff was like converging, pause, you know, quit kind of thing. Um, see what happens next, what I have for you kind of thing. What do, yeah. What is unfolding? Um, so I was like, I don't, know what to do <laughs> do i take this free college education completely free uh finish my bachelor's degree and then see what happens after that and it would probably it would probably take about like two years to complete it if i just did it full time yeah uh two to three years something like that because mm -hmm. it was like a, a fast track kind of program too um or do I instead go after uh, an art degree? Um, so let me see if I can, hopefully you can edit this out if we're taking too long, but I want to look something up go really ahead. quickly <laughs> just to tell you, uh, just to tell you what happened. Um, Get all the details, right? You've got your receipts. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I made my decision, uh, or actually, I'm not even going to preface it. Here's what happened. This is an email that I sent to them about the, in response to the scholarship award. Uh, Dr. Blank and Selection Committee, good morning. I am writing to let you know that I have decided to turn down the scholarship. After serious consideration, I have determined that this generous award would best serve another worthy applicant. It is a tremendous honor to be offered the award, and I do not take it lightly. I am more than grateful to have been selected and was overwhelmed and stunned at the news. And so with those things in mind, I think it would be prudent to share the reason for my decision. For most of my life, I have been drawn to art and illustration. Pun unintended. In my early 20s, I was accepted to a private art school where I hoped to pursue dreams from my childhood to work in a creative field. However, the cost of attendance far exceeded my or my family's abilities to fund it. I had little to no knowledge of the support that might have been available to me through scholarships and grants at the time and had no wise counsel or encouragement to seek after it. 
After receiving my acceptance letter, I put the dream away and entered the workforce. More than 20 years later, I have a career with a wealth of experience in business and technology, an incomplete formal education, two adult children who are charting their courses in life, and a lingering call to pursue art. With a talent that has lain dormant for several decades and an unanswered persistent call to develop it, I have decided to pivot and in the fall of this year, begin my pursuit of a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration. I deeply appreciate all the time, effort, and consideration that the committee invested in my application and in me, and I hope my decision at this stage does not preclude you from offering it to someone else who might be aided in the pursuit of their lifelong dream. Sincerely, Jeff. <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. And did they respond? Did they respond? That's a good question. Uh, there was a short response. Hang on here. Let me see what they said. Ah, here it is. Jeff, thank you for your considerate and inspiring note. While it is a loss for University of Arizona Global Campus to not have you as a student, we wholeheartedly appreciate the reason behind your decision and applaud you for pursuing what you're passionate about. We recognize it could not have been an easy decision. We wish you immense success and happiness in your educational pursuits and encourage you to keep UAGC in mind for others you may know who would benefit from our learning model. So anybody watching this <laughs> there, if, you know, it seemed like a good plan. I never got to get involved in it, but it it seemed like it would have been uh, a really good experience. So if you're looking for an online option, 100% online degrees, check them out. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored. We are not sponsored by not University sponsored of Arizona Global. By University of Arizona Global. But if you want to, reach Please out to Kathy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. that kind of, I guess, answered the first part of your question. So if that opens up any other questions that you have, I'll stop right there and take a pause. So, well, I guess the next question is, what did you do after that? You made the decision to walk away from technology. Like what's the process that you've taken in, in moving towards art? Yes. So I started examining um, the school in Savannah, Georgia again. Um, I came to find out that they actually have a second campus now that they didn't have before. One is in, uh, they actually have two other physical campuses, uh, but one is in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, another one is Lacoste, France. <laughs> Moving to France. <laughs> well, maybe someday, a doubtful. But um, they say once you're accepted to the school itself, you're accepted to all campuses. So you can, mm. for one, uh, what do they call them? Quarter. They have, they're on a quarterly system. Mm. So like for one quarter, you can be at the Savannah campus. At one quarter, you can be at Atlanta. At another quarter, you can be in France. Whichever one you want, you're accepted to be in either one of those. You just have yeah. to, you know, make your intention known of, hey, this next quarter or whatever quarter right. I can move, that's where I want to start going. And then they also have a what they call a fourth campus, which is just their online, you know, you can just take their classes online. Yeah. So I uh, started talking to my wife about it and she's like, I would be willing to move for you to pursue this. So don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, really? I don't even know if I'm willing to move. <laughs> but I'm glad to have that support. Yeah. Um, so we thought about it some more. We looked into it. You know, um, actually, I could in the fall just start taking courses online. You know, they have foundational courses that you have to knock out. Um, I have my general education. A lot of those, uh, a decent amount of those credits will transfer. That's good. Um, because at this art school, they do have the same kind of basics that you would need to take. Like you have to have your writing classes. You have to have your yeah. a math, at least one math credit. You have to have, you know, all these different things. Science, yeah. At an art school though, right? Anyway. <laughs> Listen, I got my degree in cinema and I had to take a global warming class. I had yeah. to take, uh, you know, a cultural history class. Like <laughs> I had to take all of these things. <laughs> so we start looking into it. Um, I go ahead and apply. I actually apply there. I apply at some other schools that are 100% online. Um, 
uh, all of them except, by the way, because they're just like so expensive and they're like, hey, if you're willing to pay us all this money, we'll let you in. Not a problem. <laughs> it's like private schools. <laughs> yes. They're all, they're all private schools and they're all yeah. incredibly expensive. And um, so <clears throat> I apply. Um, I also find out that they are, they are having like a local information event in the Dallas-Fort Worth area <clears throat> within a couple of weeks on a Saturday. So my wife and I go to it. We sit in this you know, this conference room at this fancy hotel in Dallas. And um, it's me and my wife. And then it's probably like um, 30 other people, sophomores, juniors, senior high schoolers with their parents. Like everybody else my age is there with their kid. Yeah. <laughs> and it's me there with my wife. So it's kind of funny. <clears throat> um, so my plan initially was, well, I'm just going to start taking the basics online. And then if we figure out, you know, how to move there, we'll move there. <clears throat> At this information session, um, a person stands up. It's it's like his it's his last information session that he's giving on behalf of the school because he's moving into another position. He also has his replacement there uh, with him that he's kind of coaching through you know, handing the baton over to take over like information sessions like these. And he says, <clears throat> parents and kids, I'm going to tell you all a little secret. I'm going to save y'all so much money. Um, if you want to reach out to me, if you're still in high school and you want to reach out to me and find out, you know, which dual credit classes you can take at like your local community colleges around here that will transfer <clears throat> into our foundational classes, um, you know, you just come up to me after this and let me know or reach, reach out and let me know. And so the big light bulbs go off over mine and my wife's head. It's just like, wow, we could save pennies on the dollar on, you know, maybe 25% of the, the courses needed for this degree that you're going after. Mm -hmm. So I reach out to the information session people afterwards. And I'm like, Hey, such and such is my local community college. It seems like I've looked at these classes and it seems like they look like they're equivalent to what some of your foundational classes are. Can you tell me if these will transfer? Radio silence. They don't, they don't respond. They don't tell me, uh, oh yeah, if you take this class, that one will transfer. I think this yeah. guy was like giving information that he wasn't supposed to be giving because it was his last hurrah kind of thing. <laughs> um, but I start looking up these classes and it's like almost word for word. This is the exact same class as that one. Right. This class for me to take it this semester would cost like $300 all in uh, at the local uh, two-year college, which is a different one than the one I graduated from. It's This one is like eight minutes up the road. Um, if I were to take it at this art school, it's like four grand or something like that. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the so, uh, the uh, the university hustle and the hmm. uh, the community college uh, workaround. Yes, beautiful. That's how so, I that's how I got through college. <laughs> what I have opted to do, and what I am actually doing right now for the second semester, uh, since I decided on this plan, was to take two foundation art courses per semester um to meet you know the equivalent of what it looks like it would be for really any of the degree plans that they offer everybody has to take these first this first set of block classes um so i'm taking studio art classes you know eight minutes up the street all in person the first time i've been 100 percent in person in school for over like 25 years so this is an experience in and of itself um and my approach to it is well this is still in pursuit of the two goals that I had mentioned. I want to make that my own graphic novel and mm -hmm. I want to be able to produce work that impresses me. Um, if nothing else, it's developing my skills. Let's say that I take all these classes and they're like, nah, those don't transfer. You're still going to have to take them here. <clears throat> well, I didn't lose anything. I am investing in myself yeah. and, you know, working on these projects. Um, <clears throat> and if they do transfer, and that's a huge savings. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's where I am right now. I'm working full time, still managing technology projects <clears throat> and part time uh, at night after after uh, work is over. Four nights a week, <laughs> Monday through Thursday, 
for three hours a night. I'm in a studio class drawing or this semester I'm actually sculpting things. I'm learning mm -hmm. how to make things in 3D. So like physical, not yeah. like on the computer. I think we will do some computer stuff, but I'm actually taking hot wax and like shaping it into right now I'm working on this little owl. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> how has that experience been where you've intentionally put art into your life where, I mean, you've got classes obviously, but you stopped letting it be this sort of bug in your head of like, oh, I should pursue it and like taking action. Have you seen a change in the, like your life? So <clears throat> one of the changes that I've seen is a common theme across the school and across work is something that I've been, <clears throat> been feeling like I've been, uh, been pressed on to do. And that is that whole perfection thing. Mm. Stop trying to make sure that this is perfect. Um, so examples from work would be, I would pour over an email again and again and again before I'd hit the send button, you know? Mm. And finally, I'm just like, nope, it's good enough. Hit send. If there's a mistake, you can correct it. You know, mistakes can be corrected. Sure. Um, this is not the way that I typically approach stuff at work that I'm, you know, trusted to to do right. And it's, it's still a problem. You know, I I was up until four in the morning uh, <laughs> today <laughs> working on something where it's just like, I have to get this, you know, perfect, the, the detail and all the yeah. information in the spreadsheet has to be meticulous. And I know when I go back and look at it next week, some, there's going to be an error in it. There's no way to keep the errors out is what I'm, what I was learning through work. And I'm also learning that I had that same problem as I was working on my art. Um, mm -hmm. One of the reasons that I remember, one of the things that I remember about art where I told myself, yeah, I couldn't do this professionally. You know, back when in my younger years, um, I would say it just exhausts me when I do it. It just completely wears me out. Well, what I'm starting to realize is because I was trying to put the perfect thing down on paper. Mm -hmm. Um and what I'm learning through this process now is I'm doing these, you know, I have this wide open space as I'm in the studio to work on this assignment, you know, for three out for on three hour clips. And it's just like, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just just let what uh, what raw ability, you know, or skill that you have either been gifted or that you've developed over the times that you've worked on it, just kind of let let the process happen. You know, there is no pressure on you, Jeff. You, you don't, you're not doing this to try to find a livelihood. I have a livelihood, mm -hmm. right? I, that thing that my dad said, you need to have something to fall back on. I have that in spades. Right. I have something to fall back on. So this is just a, like my goal, you'll notice in my goals, it wasn't, I am going to replace my income with this, or I'm going right. to be able to support my family you know, with this or my, all of, you know, my pursuits that I need money for, I'm going to, I'm going to replace what I'm doing now with art. That's not one of my goals. Um, I actually have taught, I talked to some professional artists in this discerning process. One of the people in Exodus 90 is a professional artist. His brother is a professional illustrator, the degree plan that um, I sought, you know, that I initially sought out to go after. The more that I'm doing this, I'm just like, well, do I want it to be illustration? There are some other things in the creative field that maybe might fit a little bit better now. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. still figuring it out. Um, and I talked to them, uh, talked to a couple people that I know do either illustration or painting or uh, animation, and they've done it for a living for decades. And one of the resounding things that I got was, oh, you're not doing this to try to pay the bills. You can actually create art that you want to create. You don't have to go create it for somebody else and do it to their specifications. You know, it's mm -hmm. like that's that take. Yeah, I don't have time to work on the stuff that I'm interested in because I have to. I have to do what the client wants. Right. I'm just like, oh, I didn't. I never really even thought about that. <laughs> so, um, 
can't remember what led me into that. But one of the things that I am learning is I, there's no pressure. There's no timeline on this. You have these two goals that they're your own thing. Nobody is expecting anything out of you. You know, you, you don't need this to pay the rent. Um, you've got what you need. Just develop this skill. It's silly. Um, one of the things that actually really moved me and it's, uh, you could look at this very cynically, but for what it's worth, um, there's, there was this commercial running at the time as I was like trying to discern all this, um, on YouTube. And it was a Jordan Peterson video where he was advertising one of the first, uh, videos behind the daily wire paywall, which uh -huh. I still have not subscribed to daily wire. There's just something. I don't know quite how to explain it, but I'm just like, you know, un unless I'm doing like YouTube commentary on what I'm finding behind the paywall, I can't, there's, I'll just leave it at that. I couldn't justify, you know, paying a, a subscription service to Daily Wire, um, even if it was just like, well, I just want to see what the content is. But the point is, there was an advertisement that was running. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but there was like dramatic music playing in the background. And it was basically like, you know, con front the dragons in your life because that's where the goal the gold is you know and um something and it's stuff that he's said before but the way that he said it this particular time is he was essentially like the way that i heard it with everything that i was wrestling with was you know go find out how great you can be mm -hmm. was essentially what the the thrust of the advertisement was and i was like okay and now I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, you guys better watch out. I'm going to be this, <laughs> you know, I'm sure every artist has like delusions of grandeur and things like that. And I, it's, I don't know what this is going to turn into or, or how good I can, you know, hone my craft or develop my skill. But right. what I finally decided with all this was I am, I'm learning that I'm not going to try to be perfect. There's, there's no need to, Right. I'm just going to try to develop myself to my full capacity of the the skill set that I have. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're if you're aiming to be an artist and all you want is perfection, you're never going to succeed and you're never going to create anything because you have to suck for a really long time mm -hmm. <laughs> at what you do to like really hone the craft and like get to that place where um you feel like even if you get to that place because there's a lot of imposter syndrome with <laughs> artists as well mm -hmm. um but to get to that place where you feel proud of that skills and like I think something that's helped me in the process of creating it's being willing to be proud of the thing for what it was and the energy that I had and the resources that I had mm -hmm. um because that that's very different than saying this is a masterpiece or this is something um that's, you know, worth something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, like, I think most art is worth more than people will pay for it. If mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Like there's, yeah. there's value in the artistic frame that is exchanged, um, that can't be quantified. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's, there's something about, I, I think just even in the process of what you gain from taking the step to create something that, uh, it gives you something, even if you, you know, don't make something of yourself from it. There was you know? something that you said there that uh, reminded me of something else. Um, I've never watched the show before. My wife has watched the entire series. Um, and so we try to find things that we both like to watch because there's a very <laughs> limited set of stuff that we both like to watch. And so I started watching How I Met Your Mother with her. Um and this episode that we just watched last night reminded me of something that you said. So one of the characters on there, you know, she's a she's a kindergarten school teacher, but her dream was to be an artist and like go to art school. And so she still paints, you know, in her spare time. And so she paints this uh, painting and they, they're desperate for money um, at this particular stage in their, you know, in their married life. And um, she's like, I'm going to I'm going to sell some paintings. You know, I'm going to make some paintings and I'm going to sell them. And she goes and tries to sell them and, and nobody will buy them. And people are looking at it and tell them that it's horrible. And finally, this this uh, this couple comes along and they buy her painting. And uh, 
she's like, you know, she's selling it for $500 and they're like, oh my gosh, we love it. And they <laughs> buy it for 500 bucks and she comes home all impressed, you know, that she bought it uh, or that she was able to sell it for $500. And she checks back in with the the customers and they're like, uh, they're like, oh, well, actually we bought it because the frame that you had put it in was just like this rare antique frame worth so much money. And so that's why we bought it. We actually threw your painting away. <laughs> right. And, um, and she comes to she comes to get her hands back on the painting, but she finds out that uh, that her painting had gotten thrown into a dumpster, and it got picked up by uh, a veterinarian who was hanging it in his office. And dogs would just be completely calmed by looking at this painting and her painting style. And so the value that was in her particular artwork that she produced was dogs loved it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. And uh, so. She was able to actually then monetize that because she she knew her market now was veterinarian offices and she had, you know, the word of mouth of no, 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 put these things up in your, you know, she would produce these paintings for, for dogs. <laughs> his veterinarian, <yeah>. for dogs. <laughs> and so it's just like, yes, yeah, sometimes our artwork is more valuable than uh, we are even aware of. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's just something, the process of like when you, well, it, it's a tricky balance, right? When you take the step to make it a career, you're, you're selling yourself a little bit where all mm -hmm. of a sudden now you've got to think about the business and the structure. And a lot of time you are creating something for other people and their visions instead of creating something that you find particularly meaningful, mm -hmm. but Hey, you've got bread on the table, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yet like whether you pursue it as a career or not, I think there is something in being creative and, you know, taking the things that are in your head and, and putting it on paper in these different ways mm -hmm. or, you know, using your hands to create something or, you know, even, you know, musicians writing, writing songs and creating melodies. Um, I don't know. I just think there's something very beneficial to like human beings and the way they process things and then mm -hmm. the way they kind of unpack the world. And I, I think that does get lost in uh, a world where everybody's trying to sell or you know get attention and sell mm -hmm. that from the craft that they do um it, it's it can easily burn you out and mm -hmm. it's it's much more in that mindset of like the perfection instead of allowing yourself to be part of the process mm -hmm. well a big part of it too with this is um with the exodus 90 thing one of the things that it tries to get you to focus on is how can i be a better um a servant of others. Mm. And so one of the things that kind of just occurred to me with this is, you know, I, I would like to, you know, develop my skill set uh, and my experience and my exposure to different things that I don't even know how to do yet. Like right. I'm, I'm learning how to make 3d sculptures right now. Um, I can see how that could, that could potentially make me better at drawing uh, things in three dimensions of, oh yeah, this is how something actually works in the three dimensional world. I can better represent that now that I have a, a better understanding of it. Um, but just like learning those kind of things and where I come out on the other end of this is, you know, there are, there are projects that I would love to be involved in helping with, you know, there are certain things that I hear about online where people are like trying to work on books and they need like book covers of, you know, that have to do with certain things that I might be interested in. Or, you know, my, my mom reached out to me recently and she said, Hey, um, here's a picture of your stepdad when he was a little kid sitting with his dad on like a fishing boat. You know, I, I want to give him like a, a drawing of this for his birthday. Do you think you could do like a drawing of it? And it's just like, you know, I want to, I want to be able to develop my skills in such a way where maybe I could help people um, with projects that, I just don't have either the experience or necessarily the ability um, to produce the kind of work that would really be helpful for them. That would be, you know, like satisfying. And mm -hmm. I know that's like a, a fine line between, you know, you're, you're doing this for a job or something else, but I don't know if there's, if I'm not relying on it for, uh, for money, somehow that feels a little bit different. Like you can, sure. I think, like this is pro this seems to me to be true in all creative realms that the people who have made a lot of money 
either in acting or musicians or you know visual artists or any kind of artist who have gotten a big payoff authors even who have like had one really big um commercial success they've got a really big uh base there at that point to be more picky and choosy or choosy about yeah. what project they're going to work on next where they're going to spend their time are they just going to take a break and not do anything and so I kind of feel like I'm in that similar position. The only thing that I don't have on my hands is time because I still have to devote time to, you know, paying the bills. It's just in yeah. a different realm. But what I'm also hoping, you know, for that I could potentially see is everything that, you know, nothing is disconnected. So the stuff that I'm doing in my professional life, you know, there there are creative switches that are being flipped on over in this other realm that are can apply over here. I don't have any really good examples of that at this point, but I can only think that stuff like that helps. I think anytime, like whatever skill you're doing, whatever thing you put yourself in, there are lessons that are transferable to so many different fields. Like mm -hmm. the, the things that I've learned um, getting a degree in cinema, like a lot of those things you know, I can use in other aspects of my life or it teaches me something, but like even pulling weeds in my backyard, it teaches me something, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's these little, like, if you, if you, if you have the right mindset, it can teach you something. It can tell you something about the world and it can, it can, it can expand those things. And I think in a lot of ways, it disconnects your mind in a way that helps you connect dots in ways you couldn't have if you continued on one single trajectory and one single path. Yeah. So I mean, I just think there's a lot of value to it. I mean, and that's why I don't know. It's interesting in schools. You have so much. Um, th th there's that fight to keep arts in schools, right? Music, mm -hmm. art programs, all of these things. Yet when we get to adulthood, <laughs> kind of lose that connection of like, well, where's the art? Where did it go? Where's that par participation in something um, that like inspires us in a different way? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I. I I think about that a lot of like, how should we participate with that in the world? And I, for, for a while, I mean, <laughs> I guess always I took a more creative path, right? I, I avoided it for a little while, but then I jumped in and I, I did the filmmaking thing and I, I worked in the artistic fields and, uh, man, there's certainly trade-offs for it. Um, but yeah, learning like, how do you, how do you engage that artistic frame? That's not the thing you hope to make money from. Mm -hmm. How do you expand that? And how do you let that make whatever path you're moving towards to make money more sustainable and more productive? Um, I don't know it's a really interesting question to me. And that, that's why I find your case interesting. Whereas you're not going, I'm going to do this. I'm going to totally change my career. And I'm going to be this thing that I always wanted to be and make a name mm -hmm. for myself. It's like, no, I, I'm going to keep doing this thing yet. Like I'm also going to be, uh, pursuing that thing that has always pulled at me mm -hmm. that I've always wanted to do and, and never did mm -hmm. um, whether it <laughs> whether it pays or not mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting and it, and you know there's a there's a big part of me that's just like I I don't really even know um like this it it might be leading me to something completely different but it's just right. like you you have to follow this thing um it doesn't mean that your ideas of what you think it could be is what it's actually going to be, right? Um, I thought I was going to go somewhere else with that, but there's, you know, one of the things that I saw is I, uh, oh, the other thing that I was going to add to this is that that college um, that I visited back in the 90s, I actually went on a business trip to Atlanta, Georgia uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and my wife joined me on the tail end of the business trip. And then we did a tour of the Atlanta campus of this school, which I had never been to. Um, and so that was a really cool experience. I was just like, yeah. oh, wow, this place is really neat. And um, so I started looking through their uh, catalog of the degrees that they offer. And I've looked at this online, but I was just really focused on illustration. They have this other degree plan that like merges um, business and art. Mm. Um, like they have, they have several degree plans that kind of fall into that realm. 
but they have this one thing that's called service design, which I'd never really heard of before. I didn't know what it was. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing in my professional life is like building systems that kind of help make people's jobs easier, where it's yeah. just like, you know, and I, I've been doing things like this for years. This will give you some context into how long, you know, I've been, well, I said over 20 years, but um, I got moved into a position one time where, uh, you know, doing your job was heavily reliant on sending faxes and receiving faxes back and, you know, ch going and checking an actual physical machine is like, mm -hmm. did the thing that they sent us come in or did the fax fail or stuff like that? And um, we had email at the time, but it wasn't common to be able to send images like in an email, particularly like faxes or something like that. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, most of the, most of the people that we were working with, they had like physical faxes in their offices where they were trying to send stuff to us. And I was able to, uh, find like different places. Cause we worked for a really big international company and I was able to find places in that company where it's just like, oh, they actually have like fax servers where they have dedicated phone lines for people to, you know, send faxes into and it'll convert them into emails and it'll send the email to, you know, wherever you want it to go. So that was one of the things that I worked on where I just, I went to my management and I was like, hey, could we just get this instead of our normal fax machine? I feel like we wouldn't like be blocking each other and waiting for faxes to come in and sending stuff out. Um, and they're like, well, yeah, put a, put a plan together to show how it'll save money either in time or in the cost of paper or, you know, toner for the stupid fax machine and things like that. And so <laughs> I pieced all of that stuff together. And then I, you know, made calls to these other branches within this huge company, like in complete other cities, people are just like track them down and just like, Hey, what would it cost for us to start, you know, using your fax server kind of thing? Anyway, the that was the long version of an example of this the service design degree. Like it takes creative thinking into account, but then it also just looks at um any type of service experience. And so the the way that I understand it is it's anything that's not a product, you know, anything where it's just like mm. you you go to a website and what's your experience there? Well, that's one thing. That's just like, you know. Uh, user experience design, that kind of thing. But this whole service design takes everything into account. It doesn't have to be digital necessarily. It could be, what's your experience like when you go through the drive-through at uh, Burger King, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that, where it's taking like three components into consideration. It's taking what is the customer's experience like? Um, what does this service that you're designing, how does it impact the actual business, you know? Like you could design a really great customer experience, but it would cost an arm and a leg and it's just not sustainable in a, right. in a, in a profit model. It's not sustainable maybe in any economic model <laughs> where, yeah, you could, the, the customer would have the greatest experience ever, but you know, you'd have to, they'd have to pay, you know, $5 million for it. So you yeah. don't have a lot of clientele out there. Um, so it's taking, it's taking uh, the business and the customer aspect into account but a third thing that's taking into account that I really had never dawned on me before is what impact is this having on the employees and the staff that's delivering mm. this service, right? Mm. And how do we find something that is optimal for all three of those realms? And mm. so I was just like, that's really interesting. And they're doing this from like a, a creative um, mindset, like design and design thinking and it just it just sounded really interesting as I started reading about it and learning more about it. And it's just like, well, I was going into this thinking I was going to do an illustration degree to what end so that I could, you know, be impressed with my own work and so that I can <laughs> make a graphic novel. And who knows, maybe I will still do that. That's the path that I'm on right now, but I don't have to make that decision yet. Right. I'm just right. getting my basics, my art uh, studio basics um, in line. Uh, and so that's where I am right now. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the truth of like, you pursue any type of art and try to make it part of your life. It's never going to be the thing you went in thinking it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're not open to being able to be moldable and change and, and move with the things that you learn and the things that you create, 
you're you're gonna get stuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I never thought I'd make a documentary. That was not in the cards. <laughs> that was not in the plans. <laughs> I mean, for a while, I didn't even think I would actually make movies at all. You know, and you know, I look at what I've done. Nothing I've ever made is quite as good as I wanted to, accessible as I wanted it to be. Yet it's like I can still be proud and happy with where it took me and like mm-hmm. what it taught me. And you know, there's there's so much more. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still very young. There's so much more in life to like that I could potentially do. And whether mm-hmm. I create anything ever again or not, um, it taught me things. Like it taught me lessons about what it is to live life and what does it mean to have a good life and what it is to live a good story and be in good stories with others. Mm. Um, there's something kind of beautiful to that. And like, that's, that's the beauty of like a path of art where, um, there's a lot of surprise in it. (laughs) That's probably true with any path you take, but I think particularly art, um, you're kind of primed to look for the beauty in it. (laughs) Mm. Um, as opposed to sort of accepting the grind of what it is because, you know, it's work. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. Is there anything else you kind of want to add or um, anything else that's sort of uh, been sparking in you as you take the steps? No, I mean, the only thing that I'm, you know, journeying through right now is, uh, what I, what I'm learning, well, this isn't something that I've learned, but it's just something that's being reinforced. You know, I've heard people talk about how, like I've, I've heard authors say, it's not that you, uh, if this is something that you're going to do for a living, it's not necessarily something that, um, like you do have to quote unquote force yourself to do it, but there also has to be this thing of, I have to write, I can't not write kind of thing. Mm. Um, what I, what I know that's being reinforced by all this is I don't have like a burning desire each day of I've got to draw something or I've got to produce some piece of artwork. Um, but that bug will come back and bite me every, like I said, five to seven years where it's just like, do, you know, do something with this that you get really Mm. excited about it. Um, But what I have learned is, well, as long as I've got a project, you know, that kind of pushes me into like doing it. And once I start doing it and then the thing comes out, I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay. This turned out pretty good. This isn't (laughs) that bad, you know? And I used to like go into, I would work on things and I would never finish them just because just like, ah, I don't want to, I feel like what I've done is really good so far and I don't want to mess it up. Like I have incomplete Mm. I have several incomplete pieces where it's just like, this is turning out really good. I'm not going to touch it anymore because I can't, it's going to get worse the more I start working on it. And yeah. my incomplete pieces, you know, all art, all art projects or whatever piece you're working on is, is incomplete Incomplic. and you can over, you can overwork it to death. But these are things where it's just like, you know, like something I did way back in the, um, in the nineties was I was like, looking at the cover of like a magazine and I was like drawing it. I was rendering what I was seeing on the magazine and it was turning out like really good. And I was just like, wow, I'm just, I got to stop because if I keep going, this is not going to be any better than what I put down right here. And Mm -hmm. it's just like, it was like a, it was like a, a game day program from going to an NFL football game. And so it's, it's part of a football player, holding a football and you can like see his leg and you can see part of his shoulder coming up. And then you can see like a guy in the background running after him, like kind of see his leg. And then I just like stop because I'm like, I can't, I can't do anymore (laughs) because it's not, Uh it's not going to be perfect. It's not, it looks really good right now, but if I keep going, I'm going to mess it up kind of thing. Yeah. And I've gotten, I I feel like this has gotten me over that. It's just like, no, I don't have to prove anything to anyone. If this comes out, not looking uh <clears throat> as good as it could have looked oh well you know there's going to be another i'll work on the next project <laughs> yeah no i mean there's there's something so emotional about the process of creating where it's like it's very it feels exposing it feels uh overwhelming i think i i have had to start um finding ways to share the things that i do that feel incomplete so that i can get to the place where you know, I can, I can work on, on things and and keep moving them forward. And then 
you know, the things that I am proud of be able to say, oh, hey, here and share those things. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's something about the willingness to um, accept incomplete work and be willing to like show it and accept, accept the incompleteness of it to then move you forward to say, hey, <laughs> what, what happens if somebody sees my incomplete work or what, what happens mm -hmm. if the thing isn't perfect? Well, life goes on and <laughs> you, you start again. And like, it's right. all part of that process of growing and getting you better. And I think half the battle is just getting over that your own psychological things that go on with the process of creating anything. Mm -hmm. The sun, the sun will come out tomorrow. So, so Annie says, <laughs> so Annie says, yeah. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you again for talking about this. Um, I, I found it helpful and yeah, maybe as you continue journeying, we can check back in and see how's it go, how it's going and where you, where you go from here. Yeah. Oh, you want to see the project that I'm working on right now that was actually due Monday last week, but since yeah. we had an ice storm here in Texas, everything closed. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. Hoping I can position this in such a way where you can actually see it. Yeah. Um, but this is from <clears throat> this semester I'm taking, last semester I took drawing one and I took design one. And so this is the first project from my drawing two class this current semester. And it's just an exercise in drawing blocks in one point perspective. Mm. Uh, I'm getting my angles wrong. Whoops! <laughs> Tilt. I'll try to I, keep it still. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. There's, there's some of the reflection from your light, but yeah. So, how are the, how do the prompts work? Are they generally pretty cut and dry? Of like, hey, this is, this is what you have, or do you have a lot of freedom and flexibility within what you can create? Um. They are pretty well defined. Um, last semester, <clears throat> we were drawing from life. So objects um, would just get placed in like the studio in the center circle where we just have like still life objects that we were supposed to draw. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was one where like we went out onto campus and we were supposed to do it's very similar to this, but it was, it was a one point perspective drawing, but we were supposed to like be looking at something like down a hallway or at some kind of structure or something like that. So um, yeah, the prompts are, are pretty uh, well-defined. Um, I'm sure as I get into more advanced levels, you know, the, the parameters will maybe be start to widen out because mm. right now it's yeah. about, I think, developing fundamentals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with this one, the rules of this one were, you know, draw at least 15 blocks, um, do them in one point perspective, have them um, have some in the background, have some in the middle ground, have some in the foreground, you know, ran or, uh, you know, balanced out that way. Some of them larger than others, some of them small, some of them transparent, some of them, you know, not transparent, opaque. Mm. The opaque ones are actually shaded. Obviously, the transparent ones are not. Um, and then the other thing that he threw in there is also it makes some of them look like traditional Tetris shapes from Tetris. So <laughs> that's this project. The next project that I ha really need to be working on as soon as we get done is he wants us to do the same, the exact same project, but do it in like two point perspective. So mm you're looking at these objects like on a corner basically and right. it's going in either direction if no, if people don't know what two point perspective is you know you just go stand on a street corner and look at the edge of a building and it's how both sides of the building like come into that one point in right. the corner interesting yeah yeah well thanks for sharing that that's it you're welcome yeah. <laughs> Hopefully right. it's hopefully it didn't look like crap. No, I, I thought it looked great. <laughs> no, I thought it looked great. Um, well, yeah, thanks again, and yeah, uh, I'm excited to see where this all goes for you. So yeah, thanks. Me too. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will close the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 